Hi, today we're going to make some Legault iodine solution, uh, which is 10% solution. We've uh, ordered the products from eBay. Uh, this was £12, which is potassium iodide, which is Ki mm -hmm. on the molecular formula. And we've ordered uh, iodine crystals, and the iodine crystals, which is I2. And we paid was it 13 13 pound for the potassium iodide, including postage. It comes in a nice silk container, and so do the crystals. The crystals are 13 pound 50. Um, this is 50 grams, and uh, the the uh, the KI is 100 grams. You'll need weighing scales. Some digital scales will be best to weigh out the um, uh, the crystals. And you'll need a glass container to store the, the, uh, the mix in and to mix the, uh, the solution up. Uh, be careful, we don't want any metal touching the, uh, the iodine solution we're making because it reacts with the iodine. Um, hence you need the distilled water and for the distilled water we've got a homemade steel uh, which is a pressure cooker. The weights are used to add a little bit of pressure to the rubber seal. We've also put a pair of mole grips on to, you know, uh, prevent the, uh, the water from leaking out from the edge because the seal actually depends on the pressure inside and because we've got a copper tubing with an open outlet uh, the no pressure builds up in there so we substitute that pressure with the hammers and the, uh, and the mole grips. The copper coil 10, mil uh, 10 millimeter comes out of, the, uh, out of the pressure cooker. See my other two videos which show how to make this and then the water um, the copper pipe transfers the heat to some cold water in a washing up bowl, <laughs> high tech. Uh, be sure to keep the water in the washing up bowl cool. Um, it quickly gets warm as the heat's transferred. So what happens is the steam distills into the copper tubing, goes around the copper tubing, comes out as water into the, into the uh, storage jar. Um, run the first bit through and then tip the water away initially, which will get rid of any oxides or anything left inside the copper tubing and we should be left with a, a nice product of uh, distilled water which you can drink, a lot of people drink distilled water and um, we also use it for distilling lavender oil and uh, other essential oils uh, from plant material so have fun, you know it, it really is a, an interesting uh, little bit of apparatus made from a simple um, pressure cooker which was given to me incidentally so the whole apparatus cost me £10. So to make the distilled water we need some tap water and we add that to our pressure cooker. I need to put some weights on here as well to make a good seal. And the copper tubing fits onto the pressure cooker bolts in there, you'll need to nip that up slightly with a spanner and the copper coil sits in a bowl filled with cold water and it's important to keep this water reasonably cool so use a jug, take some of the hot water out because as the, as the process takes place the heat is transferred from the copper pipe to the water so it warms the water off and we need to keep this cool to condense the steam back into distilled water which we'll collect in our jug to make Allegal's iodine. So we're using the homemade still, very easy to make your own distilled water, very easy to make your own essential oils from plant material and if you're that way inclined you can also make spirits. The reason you need to use distilled water is because tap water contains metals and metals react with the iodine solution. Okay, so we've distilled um, 8 fluid ounces of distilled water. 
That's tap water which we've steamed through a distiller and we've made 8 fluid ounces of distilled water. Now you need to use distilled water because tap water contains metals and iodine, and iodine uh, reacts with metals so again we need to avoid that. Um, be sure that when you've finished using your chemicals which you've ordered, um, lock them away from kids you know, and, and animals. We don't want any accidents to occur. And also regarding accidents, iodine stains tables, clothing, so be sure not to spill any. And just as a safeguard, we've put a black plastic bag on the table. Um, I'm sure you'll thank me for this. Uh, when we mix, we need to mix with wood. Again, we don't want metal, so because the metal reacts with the water. Um, and we've put a polythene bag on our scales and zeroed the scales in. So now we need to measure out the, uh, the solution. And we're making a 10% Lagol solution, 8 fluid ounces. Bag on the, on the scales, on the kitchen scales, we've zeroed them in. And now we need to measure out the potassium iodide, or K, Ki. And uh, we need um, 34 grams of iodine crystals and 67.5 grams of Ki. So we need 67.5 grams. Come to have a look, Spud. That's it, 67 grams. So now we need to add this to the distilled water. Keep stirring this and dissolve it completely. Now we need to add 34 grams of the iodine crystals. Then have a look at these crystals. Thirty four grams. Now we need to give these a good stir. Once all this is dissolved, you now have your ten percent the Gold's iodine solution. So this will need a really good stir just to make sure that all of the crystals have dissolved and then it will need to be left standing overnight and then you'll need to stir it again. Um, so if you seal the top off with some polythene if you've got an open top vessel like I have and then once it's, once it's made and you're happy that there are no crystals left then what we do is we transfer it to a brown glass bottle and these, um, these are surgical spirit bottles and uh, we use surgical spirits for dogs bedding so you know we have no shortage of these bottles and then we use the plastic plastic tops it's important to use a plastic top on the bottoms you store the iodine in again same reason it reacts with metals now the best way to apply the uh, Legal's iodine is using one of these pipettes um, I bought 50 of these for £2.40 on eBay so very affordable and uh, it's just a simple case of drawing up the, the iodine and uh, that's a drop. So rather than lecture you on how many drops you need of 10% iodine, um, 
the reason you're here is because you've already done your research. Now I added one drop um, to my wrist and rubbed it in. Me and, too. <laughs> and, and now, uh, what time is it? Quarter past one in the dinner time. Quarter past one at dinner time. And uh, we'll see how many hours it takes for this to vanish. And that will determine how much iodine you have in your system apparently. So a good test for the, your iodine level is to apply one drop and then rub that drop into your wrist and then time, so uh, make a note of the time that you've applied this and this is quarter past one in the afternoon and see how many hours it takes for the, uh, for the iodine to be absorbed into your skin and this will give us a good indication of whether you're iodine deficient or whether your iodine levels are high enough. So the longer the iodine takes to dissolve into your skin, you know, the uh, the better it is that you you know the or the the least of a problem your iodine deficiency is. It's been uh, three hours since we applied the uh, Lagal's iodine, and on this this uh, wrist, my right wrist. It was applied um, second. In other words, this was the first. This was the first batch of iodine. And interestingly enough, I have a series of little warts under my skin, and the iodine has accumulated in the warts, which is really interesting. But on the on this wrist, which was like I say, it was applied after this wrist. Um, it's virtually disappeared. So why is the iodine disappearing quicker on my right wrist than it is on my left wrist? one drop on each wrist. I've been taking the iodine now for uh, five days and uh, actually I meant to put a couple of drops on my wrist and I think I overdid it a little bit um, but we've rubbed it in and now we'll time it but interestingly enough uh, this is not the, the first time I've done it or the last and uh, the first time I did it it took three hours and it was virtually gone and then three days later I did another test and it was still there after 10 hours. Hi, I've just put the um, the girl's iodine neat. I have a couple of little raised blemishes, one there. There's another one here. That's described as hard, almost like a wart. I have a couple of blemishes here, which are like hard lumps. And um, putting the, uh, the Legal's on, it, it actually stings on these um, on these blemishes. Yet if I put it on my hand or anywhere on where the skin is normal, it doesn't hurt whatsoever. Which means that the legales has been absorbed directly into these uh, anomalies. Well, after two weeks, um, the uh, the warty type lesions that I applied the legales iodine to. Um, they dropped off. I think I used four drops in all. Um, if you're going to go near the eyes, be very, very, very careful not to get the iodine in the eye. Um, I applied it to the end of my finger and just gently rubbed it into the into the lesions. It did sting, um, which was a good thing in my opinion because you knew that it was getting into the uh, into the targeted area. Uh, it has diminished the other two lumps on my cheek. Um, we'll go back and try this again because I've read that you needed to apply it uh, two times a day and I applied it once. Um, but it did cause the uh, the, the, um, the lumps to uh, uh, crust over and then the, the skin flaked off and, and, and has greatly reduced the, uh, the appearance of these two lumps as well. So I'm hoping that these two will go, but all in all, uh, not a bad result. So I reapplied the drops to these two lumps. I've also found another one there. Got a few blemishes on my back and a couple on my chest. Uh, we'll see what happens. Hope you enjoyed the, the video making the Legal's iodine and the results. Um, look forward to reading your comments. Please check out my other videos. Have a great day.